peaceful nation. Our position is the same as the missing people's families. We're all volunteers. We're in the same position. We cry every day and search for the missing people. I cry whenever I think about it. That's one of the many volunteer divers that are searching in that cold, murky water off the coast of South Korea. There's very, very low visibility, but they're desperately trying to find any survivors of that ferry disaster. It has been absolutely heartbreaking. And now there are some really disturbing questions emerging from this tragic story. Why did the captain leave the ship as the ferry started to sink? And why wasn't he in the, at the helm in the first place? I'm joined by Rod Sullivan. He is a maritime lawyer and professor at Florida Coastal School of Law. Really a pleasure to have you with us today, sir. Why don't we talk about you, these Kevin. charges, first of all, that the captain is now facing. They include negligence, bodily injury resulting in death. However, he's defending the orders that he issued for passengers to stay aboard the sinking ship, saying the current was too strong, water was too cold, and no rescue boats were nearby. Does this captain have any defense for his actions? Well, you have to look at a couple of the different charges. First of all, Korea is one of the few countries that has a code that actually requires the captain to stay on board the vessel until all the passengers are off. So under the Korean Seaman's Code, he will be found responsible for getting off the ship before the passengers. But that particular charge only carries with it about a $5,000 fine. The more serious charges are failing to render immediate assistance to the, to the passengers, which can carry with it five years, and then negligent homicide, which can mm. carry with it a, a sentence of life. So they does like he have any defenses? Mm -hmm. Not many. The, the answer is yes. He, he, has, he has some defenses, though. In, in the light of many maritime tragedies in the past, for instance, the Exxon Valdez or mm -hmm. the Summit Venture, which hit the Sunshine Skyway Bridge, the captains have been charged but ultimately they have been freed from criminal responsibility for their actions. So in the heat of today, uh, we all feel like these, uh, these ship's officers and the captain are criminally responsible, but maybe when these charges finally come before the courts, uh, it might not be found to be so. Uh, and I guess then there's a whole separate question about civil charges, uh, if, if there's some sort of civil suit as well. Now let's talk about the crew members. Several of them are charged. What kind of charges could they be facing? Well, they could be facing uh, many of the same charges, but let's look at what the crew members have said. Um, the third mate on watch, a 26-year-old licensed officer, says that the steering gear failed, causing the, the rudder to go hard over, and her story is backed up by the, the helmsman. So if, in fact, there is a mechanical failure that initially caused the vessel to list to one side, then you can't really hold those officers responsible mm. for, for mm -hmm. those actions. Now, now, with regard to the captain, go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, the cap, in my, in my opinion, the, the captain made a very bad error here. There were only 30 minutes between the time that the first steering gear failure happened and the time when the the deck was tilted to 50 degrees. Now, at 50 degrees, it's really not possible for anybody to climb without handholds or without any kind of place to grip yeah. up the deck of a ship and escape. So by, by delaying the, the, the uh, passengers and putting on their lifeboats and getting outside, uh, he really caused their death. Um, was this a reasonable action to take? I, I think that perhaps while the ship had in initially lurched over to one side, it was possible that that was a good move. But once it was determined that the vessel was going to continue uh, listing further to one side, it was no longer than a reasonable thing to do. If those people had had chance to get out of the boat, they they might have they might have stood a, a fighting chance. Rod Sullivan, want to say thank you to you for joining us at this hour. We appreciate your expertise. Ahead of this hour, drone attacks Al Qaeda militants just days after they were caught on video rallying. We're going to speak to a Navy SEAL and a former CIA agent about the situation in Yemen. David's heart attack didn't come with a warning. Today, his doctor has him on a bare aspirin regimen to help reduce the risk of another one. If you've had a heart attack, be sure to talk to your doctor before you begin an aspirin regimen. If you own a small business, health care reform brings rising costs from taxes, fees, penalties, and community rating. And Sparity HR Solutions can balance out your cost and improve your bottom line. We are ready for health care reform. Are you? 
Hi, I'm Joan London, and if you're worried about your parent or a loved one living alone like I was, and you want reliable senior care information, then call A Place for Mom, the nation's largest senior living referral service. You'll get free information on assisted living, Alzheimer's care, nursing homes, even important financial information. They had obviously researched every place, not just given me names. Really? They found me a place for what she could afford, and it was magnificent. We're now very confident that she's safe, and they just helped every step of the way, and I can't thank them enough. Without their help, I don't know what we would have done. So if you're struggling to find reliable